In life, you have a coach. He's been where you are, testing each weight to make sure you can handle it. There are seasons of rest and the strain of normal life. And then there are those moments when Good morning. Anybody ready to be in the zone? How about you, Micah Edwards? You want to be in the zone? So come on, son, right now. You ready? <laughs> hey, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here with us this morning, and i um, just glad to be starting the series with you. So uh, about a year ago, I was introduced to this uh, workout app uh, that's called My Zone, and some of you may have heard of it, you may not have, but basically, you get a, um, a heart monitor. And now they've got some different versions of it that go on your wrist. And, um, but I bought this version a year ago. And, uh, this, uh, and this belt, man, God bless you if you want some anointing. <laughs> so, um, but this belt, that basically, it straps around. And uh, as you're working out, it monitors your heart. And then it sends that information to an app. And that app then tells you just how intense you're actually working out. And so um, this, uh, there's two little things here on the back. It, it actually won't cut on until you start uh, sweating just a little bit. It takes, uh, takes just a little bit of work to get this thing to actually cut on. But it's a play-by-play -play for uh, how good you're actually doing. And so there's, uh, just to explain it to you, give you a little information about it. There's five different colors, and gray, blue, green, red, and yellow. And so gray, the gray color is just absolutely doing nothing. Anybody like to do... <laughs> do nothing. I mean, I'm talking about laying in the bed, just sitting on the couch, eating potato chips and watching Netflix. Boy, that is, it's just comfortable. That's where it's just the absolutely most comfortable place you can be in. Um, and, and, and it's this kind of comfortable. You ever, you ever, there's another level of gray and it's just a little bit higher. It's when the heart starts pumping just a little bit, but it's a, it's the level of you ever had somebody go get the TV remote for you? Some y'all, because you was too comfortable. It's like, hey. like, it was on the other end of the couch, and you're like, dog, I'm going to have to get up. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go. Over. You know what I'm saying? You ever been that comfortable? You're like, hey, hey, baby, you mind, you mind coming in here from the, from, yeah, come all the way from the other end of the house. Yeah, if you'll come in here, yeah, what you need? Well, you, can you hand me that remote right there? <laughs> yeah. That kind of comfortable. That's, the, about, that's about as low of, com that, I mean, the highest comfort you can get and the lowest heart rate you can have, all right? And so it measures your heart rate. But if you had to get up and go get the remote, you'd probably be next level gray, all right? You'd be like just a little bit, uh, just over 50% of your maximum heart rate. And then it goes from there to the color blue. And blue's just having fun, right? Blue's, blue's working out and uh, you don't even really know it. You know, you're, you may be hunting, you might be fishing, you could be, uh, you could be actually in a band playing the drums can probably get you up into the blue area and your heart rate's moving and your body's, you know, it, there's something happening, something going on and, uh, and you just, just enjoying yourself, right? And there's not a lot of uh, intense conversation going on in your head, but then, but then if you keep going, you know, you get up to a little bit more intensity, uh, you go from the blue to the green. And uh, at the green level, you can have a conversation. And I'm sorry if that's blurry up there, but uh, you know, when you're when you're the green level, you're you're you know you're losing your breath and you're able to speak sentences and uh, your muscles are starting to feel it, uh, but you're not really looking to discuss any deep theological question. All right, it's like, hey, how's your mama? Good. Um, you know, like you might be walking on a trail or that kind of thing. But then. You go from green and then you get into yellow. And yellow is the place where you repent because you're cussing the coach that wrote the program. <laughs> so, 
Some of y'all been in the yellow. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And those of you don't, bless you. I, I hope to get you there, okay? But that's when you start to really, you start to have a little confidence. There's a dialogue going on in your brain. It's like, what am I doing right here, right now? I mean, my heart was up a while ago. And, you know, it's like I enjoyed that workout. That workout was great until you put in air squats, you know. Hey, why do we got to do air squats? I I don't need air squats. You know what I'm saying? So you st- there's another level of intensity, and that's where, man, you're starting to sweat. And, man, don't, don't anybody ask me any questions over about a three-word answer. Maybe a two-word. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, leave me up. <laughs> and I'm trying to breathe, trying to breathe over here, trying to live. And then when you get out of the yellow zone, you get into the last zone, it's the red zone. And and the red zone is, man, you are all in. Your heart rate is about 95% of your max. And the deal is you can't live there. You can, at that point, you don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to see nobody. And you are repenting, okay? Because you done said some mean things in your head at least, right? Jesus knows. And, and it really is. You start to have this dialogue with your brain. It's like, no, don't, you know, this is, anybody ever heard of a thruster? Okay, one or two people, right? A thruster is just this fun thing where you like to take an air squat, put weight on it. And turn it into a front squat, and then as you front squat, you go down, and when you come up, you press it over your head, right? And they don't like to do that light, they like to do it heavy, but a thruster is something where I might come in and see that workout and want to just throw up. I mean, why did I get out of bed for this? I, you know, am I, what am I, you know, what am I thinking, right? And I just wonder if this month, if we could look at our health, our physical intensity, and compare that to maybe how we're acting in, in our spiritual intensity and, and ask some questions and, and, and really get down to the basics of, man, uh, you know, how comfortable of a life has God called us to today, right? What's he, what's he want us to live in? I remember the first time that I put this on, you know, and, and what about, anybody ever heard of a burpee? Y'all quiet. Some of y'all, just be, if you heard of burpee, you can say, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we ain't going to haul you out of here, okay? I, I know people. If they do, I know people, all right? So, but I, I hate burpees. I mean, I can't stand burpees. Now, I remember the first time I put that app on, and I thought, man, burpees have always killed me. I want to know what it's really doing to me, right? I want to be able to say, this is how bad it's really been. So I put the thing on, and I started in the burpees, and I got to that feeling at about six, okay? I'm like, holy moly, I'm about to die, right? And I look over at the app, and the app's like, man, you're, you're not even close. <laughs> I'm like, What? You're not even close to death, man. You got plenty of room. Get after it. And I'm like, oh, no. And, you know, and so for the first time, I went from doing 50 burpees in 25 minutes to like 10 minutes. And so that reflection, being able to see where I'm at, actually helped me get more intense. Now, I promise you, after I got back from sabbatical, one of the things that God told me to do was never do a burpee again. He wrote it down in a, in a stone tablet. <laughs> so, but I got back and my buddy Jonathan, I don't know where he's at. He was here first, so he may be gone. But my buddy Jonathan, I work out with. He's like, man, you work out with me? I'm like, no, I, I mean, I'll come, but I, I, I just want to do that. Everybody that ever gets into work, you know, it's like all the dudes I know. It's like, hey, I'm going back to the gym Monday. You are? Yeah, what you doing, bench? <laughs> I'm going to do chest, chest day Monday. That was kind of how my, I thought about it. Like, I just, I don't want to do any burpees. I'm not coming to do burpees. And so I get there and Jonathan's like, hey, I don't want you to do any burpees. But what we're going to do is we're going to get down like we're getting into a push-up. And then we're going to stand up. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what a burpee is, that's a burpee. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not. I'm not the dumbest guy. I'm not the smartest guy, but that's a burpee. <laughs> that, that right there is a burpee. And so, and so Jonathan, you know, thank God for him because he's encouraged me and I love him and I hope he loves me. And, 
But you just never know. I'm just telling you, the first time I walked into a gym, it had been about 20 years. And I, I, when I was growing up, loved working out. And then I just got into life and got away from it and never, you know, just didn't go back for a long time. And then, then I finally went back. And when I, I remember the day I was pulling up, I was like, man, I'm, all I'm going to find is a bunch of, you know, muscled up meatheads and uh, beautiful, the, the mo- you know, like uh, uh, Greek gods. You know, <laughs> I'm just going to walk into this spa and here's going to be me. You know, and, and so I'm just wrestling in my mind, like, you know, telling myself, you got this, it's not that bad, you can go in there. And uh, it was a big deal for me to get out of my car and go in and try to get a piece of equipment for the first time and, and do something. And, and I remember in the early stages of that, I can't tell you how many days the, the little workouts I did, I actually had to, um, you know, me and Brad, it, it, he's the one that kind of got me there. And I'm like, hey, dude, don't leave. I'm about to pass out. I, and it wasn't intense at all, right? It was just a simple, I may have did five burpees. I remember the first time I did five burpees and I'm like, I'm leaving. I'm gone. Check. I'm out. But, but. But expecting and wrestling with my mind and, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm comfortable at the house. Anybody? Just leave me alone. I mean, I, li- I like plump. <laughs> you don't? Oh, you better say amen, right? It's like, I, I, I kind of like being a little juicy. I mean, you know, I can't help it. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Why, why am I being uncomfortable? Why am I trying to, because the, the deal is after a while you start to understand that there is a, there, there's a payoff, there's a, there's some bang for the buck, there's some reciprocation and, and it's a hard decision and it's an uncomfortable decision, but overall it's a good decision. It's a good thing to do. And I got to tell you, every day, I, I go to the gym about five days a week, and I, I don't even try to find out what the programming is. I don't want to know. But I can tell you about it. Every day I walk in, and there, I enjoy it, but there are some days when I see what's on the board, I'm like, not today, Satan. <laughs> not, not to, and I do anything I can not to do what Jonathan and them have put on the board, but the reality is I know that if I submit to it, if I surrender to it, it's just going to make me better. Right? The right decisions are not the easy decisions. What's the old saying in the gym? No pain, no gain. I had to make a commitment. I had to commit to being uncomfortable. And I got to tell you, looking back, I realized that uh, something I didn't know, and uh, you know, by all means, Lord, I'm the, listen, when I go by the, the bike trail and I see people struggling, I'm, I'm like, Lord, help him. Help God. Help her. <laughs> help her. Lord, I know she wants it. Help her. Because I know. I know what the struggle is. I know what the wrestle is, right? I know what the battle is. And so, so but when I look back, I realized that my health was discombobulated. Anybody know what that means? <laughs> Have you ever been discombobulated? I mean, it, what it means is out of order. It, it's confused. I, I mean, I was confused, especially the first God, Lord. I was a mess. My body had rebelled against me. And, and you know what I needed more than anything? I needed combobulation. That's a word. I know. <laughs> Chris, don't you laugh at me. That's a word. Now, listen, before you write an email, send me a text or anything, I know that combobulation is not a word. I know it. But where I come from, <laughs> where, and say, tell me if you can identify with this, but where I come from, some words exist just by deductive reasoning. Are you tracking? Are you with me? So, so the reality is, is, if you can be combobulated, then surely, or discombobulated, then surely you can be combobulated, right? If you can be broken up into pieces or shaken or disordered or confused, then surely you can be brought back to peace. Surely you can be put back together. And if you can be combobulated, right, if you can be, if it's possible to be combobulated, then then the process of or experience of combobulation exists. And if there's combobulation can happen, combobulation can only happen if there's a combobulator. (laughs) 
Somebody, thank you. Where I come from. <laughs> I come from a little town called Wee Wah Hitchcock, Florida, and where we live, there's combobulators. <laughs> and some of, some, of y'all, some of y'all don't believe in combobulation because you've never met the combobulator. Right? You've never met the one that takes broken pieces and puts it back together. You never met the one who takes the blind eye and makes it see. See, we were all dead and broken and pieces in our lives. And then the combobulator came along and he spoke life to us. And now we're whole again. Combobulation cannot happen without capitulation. (laughs) Somebody say, I don't know where we're going today, right? Now, capitulation is a word. (laughs) But combobulation, God can't put you back together. He cannot work in your life. He cannot bring healing to your heart if you're not willing to surrender and submit to his will. Somebody, yeah, go ahead. So that's what we're talking about this month. I hope for the whole month of July to be talking about the act of capitulation, the act of surrendering, the act of ceasing to resist, right? I think too many times we end up resisting what the coach is asking us to do, and he's not asking us to do it for his benefit. He's asking us to do it for our own. So combobulation cannot happen without capitulation. Hebrews 5, 8 says this, although Jesus was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. We learn how to obey because of the uncomfortable places we walk in in life because of the Father's will. Obedience is saying yes when you don't want to. (laughs) That kind of blows my mind nowadays. Like, hey, will you do so and so? I don't want to. Well, (laughs) I didn't ask you if you wanted to. Anybody ever had that conversation? I wasn't really investigating for the want. I just asked you to do, right? And so in a time and era when people do mostly what they want to do, and spend most of their days doing the things that they want to do, obedience is something that's far removed. And because there's no obedience, right, because there's no surrender or submission to the will of God, because there is no capitulation, then combobulation rarely happens. And I can tell you whether you know it or not, you're desperate for the combobulator to come and capitulate you. No, combobulate you. See, you got me confused. (laughs) See what you did? I saw you. (laughs) Don't do that again, all right? Don't you dare. (laughs) But there is no combobulation without capitulate. Listen, I got to stay on target. Stay on target. Let me make this statement. Left to ourselves, left to ourselves, we would never choose to be uncomfortable. Think about it. Your whole day, I promise you, your whole day is planned for comfort. <laughs> it's what you think about. It's what you dream about. So I'm going to go, just as soon as I can get out of here, I'm going to go what? I'm going to go eat. That sounds good. Yeah, let's go. What am I going to eat? Well, I'm not going to eat anything nasty. <laughs> you ever try to make that decision with your family? Where are we going to eat today? My favorite thing is when Kelly tells me, I, hey, I don't care. Well, go anywhere you want to go. I'm like, Captain D's it is. <laughs> I haven't been to Captain D's in years because my wife struggles to love me. You understand? <laughs> and then she's like, I'm not going to Captain D's. Now I want to say today, would you just capitulate? <laughs> There is no combobulation without capitulation. So left to ourselves, all we're going to do is seek what? Comfort. 
Hey, what's the air conditioning on? Is it 72? Man, it's hot in here. Would you bump it down to 70, please? I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Hey, could y'all turn that down? It's, you know, it's li- I'm a little sensitive today. I got a little headache. I- Never mind the concert you was at last night. It was like, mm, you know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Get frustrated. I- I'll-, I'll confess. I'll confess this. Get frustrated when the line at the fast food place is too long. Anybody, anybody, anybody like my family, boy, they, they can preach to me. But, man, if I pull up and there's three cars, I'm just going to keep on a pulling. <laughs> I, <laughs> Dad, we can wait. Come on, let's do it. I'm like, I'm, uh-uh, I'm not away. I'm too busy, you know. I, I'm too, I need comfort, and I'm not going to wait in line. And, and I go by sometimes, I go by some, and there'll be 30 cars sitting there waiting in line. I'm like, how do you do it? I don't, I don't know. If you're one of those people, I don't know how you do it, and I'm broken, pray for me. It's my sin, Okay. But we like our comforts. We like, we like to get up and get our coffee. And we like, you know, how comfortable can we be, right? And so, so what, what, what we want to discuss, I'm sorry, I lost my spot. Left to ourselves, we'll never break that mold. It is the will of God. I want to say it like this. When the will of God imposes, when the will of God imposes on our lives, we begin to wrestle with whether or not we're going to capitulate or rebel. Are we going to surrender and be an obedient child? Or are we going to find a way to justify or rationalize where we're at and do something different? My favorite one is when, when procrastination happens. Hey, will you grab that bag of garbage and take the road? I will in a minute. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> For all you know, he took it in a minute. I'm like, that minute never comes. Does that minute ever come at your house? Hey, will you grab so-and-so? I, I will in a minute. My, I didn't ask you to grab it in a minute. I asked you to grab it right now. You know? I remember Caleb, my oldest son, he's here with us today, and he's been out of town a lot, and he's up here playing the piano, and man, he looks just like his daddy, my Lord. His mama messed it up a little bit, Okay. Just, it was, it was perfect, but just a little, okay? Um, so he's mostly cute, but I remember when he was about three or four, and, you know, oddly enough, he, he I, I don't, I'm thinking back on this, it kind of blows my mind, but I ran over him with a lawnmower, okay? And, yeah, we can laugh now. It wasn't that funny then, but, but it's, it is funny. We laugh all the time. He's like, Dad, look what you did to me, you know, and trying to get sympathy, and sometimes it works. Sometimes he gets an extra dollar or two. <laughs> like I'm paying for my sin, but when he was little, he was a little guy, and he, he, I just always had to keep him away from me and the lawnmower, like he wanted to be right there, which I love, and so one day it got to the point where I'm like, I, I just had to spank his butt, and that's the way I, I was raised, you know, if you got out of hand, you get a whipping, you know, and so I spanked the little guy, and he's got crocodile tears, and he's looking up at me, I'm standing on the front porch, and he's like, it ain't fair, I'm like, well, of course it's not fair, right? It's not fair, is what he said. And I said, I said, what do you mean? It's, it's not, what do you mean it's not fair? And he said, you got a belt and you bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is the wrong attitude to have, son. <laughs> okay, we are not having this. <laughs> so bless his heart, he's always struggled to capitulate. Like, man, just quit resisting. Just let me, please, just stop. Anybody ever struggled with that? I think all of us could testify about our, our, our lack of, or of ability to capitulate to things around us. And not just that, but sometimes the will of God, maybe a lot of times the will of God. There is no combobulation without capitulation. And Luke 12, verse 8, it says this, Jesus says, And I say to you, everyone who capitulates to me before men or confesses, <laughs> to everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Man will profess him also for the angels of God. But whoever rebels against me or denies against me 
uh, denies me before men, will not concede, will not let me have my way with him. Whoever does that, right, he will be denied before the angels of God. I thought it was interesting that this is the passage. It sort of begins in Luke 12. But as you get on into Luke 12 and Jesus continues to teach... And there's some tough things in that passage. He gets on down to verse 31. And Peter interrupts him and says, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone in the crowd? This is some, this is some tough preaching. Who, are you preaching to them or to us? <laughs> Jesus doesn't seem to acknowledge him and just keeps teaching. But a few chapters over... You see the experience in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, where Jesus comes to Peter and he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to discombobulate you. That's what he said. Satan desires to sift you. It actually means to shake and break you up through a sifter. And it just happens to be what just come up to shake one, to break one up. Like Satan desires to discombobulate, discombobulate you, to sift you like wheat, to disorder you. And then Jesus comforts him and says, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you have once, once you have capitulated, strengthen your brethren. I've read this passage so many times over the years, and, and it always amazes me. Hey, Peter, don't worry. It's going to hurt. Huh? <laughs> what? Peter, it's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable, but I want you to remember at your lowest point that I have prayed that your faith will not fail. How uncomfortable are you willing to be to surrender and capitulate to the will of God? But Peter's like us, and we're a lot like Peter, I guess, because it says in, in verse 33 of that same chapter, it says, but he said to him, Lord, with you, I'm ready to go to prison and death. I'm ready, Lord. But here's the deal. God knows something about Peter that Peter doesn't know about himself. And God knows that very same thing about you. And the only way he can work it out is if you will surrender to his will and say yes to God. If you will concede your ideas as being less than his ideas. If you could imagine that his ways are higher than your ways and that he knows what you don't know. If a young man, a teenager, could look at his daddy and realize how smart his daddy actually is. He said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison. I'm ready to go to death with you. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. <laughs> you know what I think Peter was thinking about? I think he was thinking about that parable that Jesus had just shared a few days ago. I think it was heavy on his mind. He remembered. Jesus said, listen, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. I think he's wrestling with the fact that, hey, wait a minute. What Jesus is actually saying is, Peter, I'm about to deny you. I'm about to be in a position where I will not profess you before my Father in heaven. And Peter's like, no, that can't be so. Peter didn't want to face the facts about himself. <laughs> what difficult place is Jesus calling you to today? Remember that old little song, he's still working on me. 
You know what? To make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, right? Because he's still working on me. I think sometimes we forget that he is in a continual process of working on and through us. Jesus does visit Peter after the resurrection and interacts with him. And he asked Peter, he said, three times. And some, some do believe that he asked him three times to remind him of the three denials. Do you love me? Peter, first two times, like, yes, Lord. Yes, I love you. Right? But remember, he was like, yes, Lord, I'll go to prison with you. I'll die for you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Finally, the third time, Peter says to Jesus, only you know. I don't know. And that's an honest place, isn't it? I thought I knew. See, now he's thinking about, I remember when I said, hey, I'm ready to go to death in prison, but then I denied you three times. I denied that I knew you. I wouldn't even associate with you in a crowd. And now here you are looking at me face to face and you want to know if I love you. And Lord, I want you to know, I want it to be true of me. I want you to know that I love you. I want to believe that I love you. And he's like, only, only you know. And when he said that, Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And then he told him, you're going to die on a cross. Huh? (laughs) They're going to put you on a cross. They're going to bear your arms and tie you up on on a tree. And that's how you're going to die. And then he looks at him and says, you must follow me. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? (laughs) That's far removed from the comfort of the daily life, isn't it? I'm about to close. I'm not, not long. Jesus, I have found this to be true, that Jesus is continually revealing me to me. <laughs> me to me. I used to, when I was younger, it was God was, he was just revealing others to me. <laughs> I was fixing everybody else. I knew what was wrong with them. And man, the older I get, I've come to a complete understanding that, man, if I could just get me out of the way, if I could just die to myself, if I could just decrease, and the reality is, here's the reality, you can't get you out of the way if you can't see who you are. And the only way you can find out who you are is to follow him in total surrender. Matthew 5, 12, 1 through 12, it's this, and I'm I'm just going to kind of summarize this. It's the Beatitudes, and it says, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up onto the mountain and sat down, and his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them the the Beatitudes. And in verse 3 it says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit. In verse 4, Blessed are those who mourn. In 5, Blessed are the meek, or blessed are the meek. Then blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. And blessed are you when people insult you. And when people persecute you. And when people falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Let me say it like this. Blessed are the uncomfortable because of their obedience to God. He's calling you to an uncomfortable place. Their combobulation depends on capitulation. I want to say this, living in the gray, living in the, I'm going to sit on the couch comfort, living in the place that you want somebody else to grab the remote, living in that place is a commitment to never changing. It's a commitment to things always being what they've always been. I 
I remember uh, a friend of mine, a mentor, a friend of mine, he was talking to me one day and he just started talking about, you know, uh, he, he had daughters. That's all, that's, that, I don't want to say that's all he had. Daughters are special, right? I've had sons. I don't have any daughters. So I don't know what it's like to raise a daughter. So, um, but he, he had daughters. He had girls. And so, uh, he's telling me one day, his, his oldest had gotten married and, and he was telling me about his son-in-law had just broke his tractor and it's, you know, strewn his tools out and just, I mean, making the yard a mess. And I mean, he just had a list of my lawn. And I'm like, man, what's wrong with this, you know, this son-in-law? What's wrong with this dude? And as he's talking, it hits me. I'm like, oh, you've never had a son. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> You, you, like, you, like the, you like things to be where you put them. <laughs> Too bad, right? I mean, if you've never had a son and one day maybe you've got daughters and you're going to have a son in your life, let me help you out. This is the kind of scenarios that play out. Now, I'm saying to my boy, I don't know how many brand new tool sets I have purchased. And I'm like, I will kill somebody if you touch. I mean, I'm like, there is no more threat left, right? <laughs> Obviously, they know I won't kill because... I remember the latest one, I brought a brand new impact, a, a cordless impact and an impact set and some tools and I'm not going to name which one, but like, Daddy, I, I promise I'll put it up. Daddy, Daddy, if you just let me, Daddy, I'm like, no, you're not using it. You know, he's out there grinding with old broken up tools that, that were nice previously. And, and it's like, Daddy, come on, it just make it so much quicker. So I'm like, okay, listen, you can use it, but you better put it all back. Daddy, I promise you I will. I promise you I will. You just, you can trust me. Next morning, it's raining. I'm not talking about weeks later. I'm talking about less than probably 10 hours later. It's raining. I go outside. My brand new sockets are wide open, raining on them, raining on my battery, raining on my brand new charger. That's what it's like having a son. If you got daughters and you don't have that problem, keep them at home, okay? <laughs> don't you let them bring such things to your house, all right? But you know, it's like, man, I want my, I just, can I just please? Can I? I just want, I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Can my, can my wrench just go back to where it started, please? Comfort is such an enticing thing. But living in the gray is a commitment to never changing, a commitment to always want it to be like it's always been. And can I tell you that's just not realistic? I've asked people over the years, I've witnessed, and, my, and one of the challenging statements, I'm like, man, let me, you know, just kind of getting around the God thing. Hey, do you have a relationship? Because you never know what people are going to say. It's like, yeah, man, uh, you know, I got saved when I was a kid. And I'm like, well, what's happened since then? I've been married to my wife for 20 years, and I promise you, the relationship is not the same. It grows. We've been through some difficult seasons. We've had some hard times and we have grown together. And that's what God wants to do with you. Let me say this. If you're in the gray, it's time to leave the comfort zone. And legitimately, the gray area is a place where lots of people end up living. And for real, and I want to say this this morning, if you just come out of an intense, red, hot, you know, like all energy, all, it's just been the heaviest season of your life, you know the next place you need to be is where? The gray. <laughs> you need to rest. Man, Jonathan just got through making me do 25 burpees, and I'm about to fall over, and I can't breathe. I can't go back and do 25 more burpees. I got to breathe. I got to rest. 
I have to recover. I've got to heal. I've got to get me restored. And so the gray area, it is a legitimate spot that God calls some people. And if you're in that spot, rest. Rest. But some are in the gray area and you went there legitimately because you needed a place to rest. You ended up there because you needed to be strengthened. You needed to be able to relax and recover and to, re, to be healed. You needed to be restored. But after a period of time passed, the need for recovery gave way to convenience. And the need for pleasure took over. And the desire for relaxation, it just consumed you. And the ultimate desire to be comfortable is winning. Combobulation depends on capitulation. <laughs> Some of you in the gray this morning, honestly, because you've just been entangled with the failures of life. You're exactly where Hebrews 12 warns. It warns us about it. It says, therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witness surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside the weights that, 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 and sin that, that hinders us, that so easily entangles us. It actually means let us lay aside the burden and the heaviness of life. Let's lay it down. You can't carry it anymore. And then lay aside your failures and your mistakes. Some of you are just living constantly in your mistakes. And you look back most of the time. And Jesus is like, look, leave that behind and look forward. I have something for you. It's a hard place. It's a difficult place but healing is going to come so let us move with haste and with conviction in the race that's set before us and then I want to say there's one more group possibly you're in the gray this morning just simply because you don't know you don't know and that's all right you didn't even know there was a race. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, I, huh? This is all brand new to me. And man, that's amazing and that's okay, that's great. There's a next step. This morning, Jesus is saying to every one of us in this room, will you follow me? Will you capitulate? I'm getting ready to close and the band can get ready to come on out in just a minute. I want to say it like this. Don't let procrastination, insubordination, disorientation, disinformation, the wrong interpretation, unholy justification, relaxation, rationalization, or condemnation rob you of your destination. I don't get a hang. I mean, I, I worked hard on that. I'm just going to tell you right. <laughs> I just, man, security, please. <laughs> I worked hard on it. Don't let it. Don't let it rob you of your destination. Instead, let the manifestation of His illumination fill you with determination. And let the sin in your life experience deactivation so you can walk in demonstration of a brand new identification that declares his magnification. There you go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! Man, y'all don't know how long I Googled on that. I Googled for a while. I Googled a while. And one last thing, missionization requires capitulation. It's dependent on your participation to experience transfiguration. And my last question to you is anybody want some combobulation? <laughs> huh? I want the band to come. Are you ready for some combobulation? God wants to heal you. It's not, it's, it, there's more, thank God, if you've experienced, you may be here this morning and you've never experienced the love of Christ and you hear him calling your heart, today is your day. Today, this is your moment, this is your time. I love what Romans 10 says. 
It says in verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. What happens is, is your mouth begins to line up with your actions. Something just like, whoa. If you capitulate today and say, God, I'm tired of doing it on my own. Right? That's what repentance is. It's like, Lord, I thought I was smarter. I thought I had it figured out. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Your combobulation will depend on your capitulation. Best band, I want to just sing a little chorus just for a moment. Praise His name forevermore. Endless days we will see. your voice and sing that old praise. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, Lord. Praise His name forever, for endless days. We will sing your, your praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord our God. Oh, And it's like, man, I'm surrendered. It's things you can see. It's the things that are on your radar. Whatever that is. It might be just simply, it might be as big as anger. Like, God, I'm just giving you my anger. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know why I'm so angry, but I'm just giving that to you. I'm saying, yes, I'll let you. I want you to heal me of, of my anger. And I'll commit to that process. Or maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's insecurity. Maybe it's uh, hopelessness. Maybe it's just oppression. Something just gnawing at you all the time. God is yours. I'll walk through it. God, I'll face it. Maybe God's calling you this morning. Maybe he's saying, I've got a difficult thing I want you to do. Maybe he's been speaking to your heart. And he's saying, follow me this way. I want you to go into this area. I want you to go into this room. It's an uncomfortable 
place to begin to go into places that men and women do not know if they don't know but they need they need Jesus this morning they need him how how uncomfortable will you be what kind of what level of discomfort will you commit to so that God can use you to inspire others to worship that's what the scripture says it says go about doing good works before men so that others may see your good works and when they see them they glorify your father in heaven Amen. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. We worship you. We honor you. It's by your power, your presence, Lord. We lift you up. God, I just pray right now for everybody in this room. I pray for every person. I just pray right now that you would uh, give them what they need, God, as they, as you have got things in front of them. God, as, as you are leading them, God, as you're speaking to their hearts, God, I pray you help them to understand and to know, God, that they would see your will. And God, that even though the road may look challenging, and God, there may be moments of great difficulty, God, that they would make the decision this morning to get out of the grave. God, just that next step, God, maybe it's just belief, God, just to surrender that, God, my ways are not your, God, be bigger in my life be more in my life God maybe it's a big task maybe there's something they've carried for years and they've wrestled with and they pushed it off and pushed it away let today be the day God that complete complete surrender happens God and they move forward amen can we give Jesus a hand will you do that go ahead bless his name